To be completely honest, electric motorcycles are sort of a weird proposition. Motorcycles already get great gas mileage, and for some, the loud engine is a source of pride. Yet, Zero Motorcycles keeps making new models and frankly continues to impress with its evolution. The latest motorcycle out of the Northern California company is the SRF. Now, this isn't an upgrade. This is a brand new bike, an entirely new beast. And with it comes new technology, both in the handlebars and in the powertrain. But like all EVs, it is expensive, starting at $19,000. Still, I can't help but want one in my garage. To talk about the tech, the first thing you need to talk about is the first thing you see when you sit down on the bike. And that is the new 5-inch full-color TFT LCD display. Now, it displays the usual how fast you're going, what your state of charge is, what time it is. But it's also where you control the cruise control, the ride modes, and even the heated grips if you so happen to get that option. Is this warm now? Yeah, that's the stuff. While riding both during the day and at night, the display was bright enough for me to see even while I was wearing polarized glasses. It also has two modes for night and day, so your eyes aren't blasted once the sun goes down. The whole thing is controlled by this knob slash lever slash button that's right above the turn signal. Now, it took me about two to three days to get used to it. There's a lot of pushing and holding to get into certain modes. But before long, I was adjusting the ride modes and the heated grips on the fly with no problem. My biggest issue is there's a bit of latency enabling the modes. There's a lot of pushing and holding, which meant I kept looking down instead of looking at the road, which isn't ideal for a motorcycle. Where you want to look down is at the new app. It's easier to use and frankly just looks better. Plus, thanks to the SRS 3G connection, which is included with the bike, you can check on the bike for things like charge rate. Nice when you're eating lunch and you want to know if you should order dessert. You know, because you want the bike to have more range, not just because you're a glutton like me. The 3G connection means that Zero can push over the air updates to this bike almost anywhere. In fact, I got one while reviewing the bike. When it popped up, I just parked it in my garage, plugged it in, and walked away for 30 minutes. More and more vehicles, cars, trucks, SUVs are getting these types of updates, so it should be no surprise that it's coming to motorcycles. The only issue you might have is if you accidentally initiate an update while you're, well, out in the middle of nowhere. It's actually pretty difficult, so it shouldn't happen, but if it does, you're just kind of stuck there for 30 minutes. The SRF feels less like an evolution of Zero's motorcycle lineup and more like a jump forward. The bikes have always had a fun factor that ties into the EV torque. The FXS is particularly fun, but also a bit too dangerous for anyone beyond experienced riders. The controller for the SRF tampers down some of that initial burst into something more manageable without losing the exhilaration of that initial boost of power. On my first ride with the Zero SRF, the company kept using the word smooth. Now, I assume this is just a bit of marketing, but in reality, compared to the rest of the lineup, this bike really is smooth. Yet that doesn't mean you won't have fun. In fact, in street and sport mode, you'll be blasting off the line and have access to power almost all the way up the power band, all without switching gears. It's just a non-stop smile fest. The power is handled by the ZF7510 motor, which is brand new, and the new ZF14.4 battery pack. That 14.4 stands for, well, a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now you put those together and the bike outputs 110 horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque. So, yeah, it's fast. Around corners, these large tires dole out impressive handling while the Showa suspension keeps you planted to the asphalt. On highway and mountain roads, I never felt anything other than stability. It works as a commuter and a bike for quick, fun jaunts. If you're looking for a weekend cruiser, something that'll do five, 600 miles over two days, well, this is not your bike. In fact, there are no EVs that'll fit that bill. And during my test with the SRF, I got between 75 and 140 miles of range between charges. Now that huge discrepancy has to do with a lot of variables, including what kind of mode I was riding in, stuff like that. 
but really it has to do with where I was riding. If I was on the freeway, I was going quickly, which meant I was burning through the batteries. If I'm just cruising around town, the battery lasted way longer. Also in Northern California during the summer, the afternoons are very windy and I just happen to be on the freeway during those times. So like a giant sail that's not helping the boat go forward, I was killing the battery by riding around. In the city, while in eco mode, the bike had more than enough charge for me to ride around for about a week before I had to plug it in. For that charging, the bike supports level two charging standard. You know, the port you see on almost every electric car, that's on this bike. No more riding around looking for a wall socket if you happen to be out with your zero motorcycle. Now, most of the time, I charge my vehicles at home, whether it be a motorcycle or a car or whatever, but when I'm out riding, I would rather be able to stop at one of these charging stations and top off the bike than just immediately heading on home. So we've talked about all the new tech and the new powertrain, but the one thing we haven't talked about is curb appeal. And in that respect, Zero's really brought it with the SRF. Now, they've actually accented both the motor and the battery pack. So when people drive by, they know this is different from the gas motorcycles they're used to. This is an EV. And the result is something that looks magnificent. And it still has that storage area that resides where a traditional motorcycle will have its gas tank. This thing's actually pretty big. You could probably get about five burritos in there and it has two USB ports. So I can charge my phone and suck the battery from the bike ever so slightly. So when I get to my destination, I can tweet about it. With these upgrades and a better looking bike, Zero continues to be the one electric motorcycle maker to keep your eye on. Now, there are other companies out there, but they keep going out of business or they're not doing so hot. Meanwhile, the big guys, they're working on concepts and ideas. While that's happening, this Northern California company continues to put out quality two-wheeled EV transportation.